What's going on you guys? Motorcycle Boss again. We are working on two bikes today. We got a Triumph Daytona 675. What year is this again? 2013. 2013 675. And we got a 2005 Ninja 636. Both of these need oil changes. And if you don't already recognize these two guys here, we got Sin City Slick and we got Bike Tender. These are both of their bikes and we're going to get to work. Let's go. So the first thing we're going to do to make sure that we can do our oil change is we have to be able to access the oil filter. And the oil filter is actually down here behind the plastics, so we have to remove this, uh, remove the plastic. There's one bolt here, here, and one up here. And once you remove those, there's going to be more bolts under here, and I'll show you that. Once you remove the bolt that's up here, I already loosened this so I can remove this pretty easily. You're actually going to have multiple bolts, and I don't know if you can see this. There's one bolt here, here, one over there, and then there's one down there. Remove those, and we'll move on to the next step. Once you take off the plastics, all you got to do is disconnect the turn signals. These two right here. Make sure you guys know what color you're going back to. Sometimes they're different. Blue to green to black, white to black here. And disconnect your rectifier. So now, next thing we're going to do, we're just going to take uh, where you add the oil. Just take that cap off. This is going to be so that when we pull the drain plug off, air can come in and then the oil can drain faster. So we're gonna throw the drain pan underneath, to catch all the oil. Right here is the drain plug. We're just gonna loosen that, break that real quick. Have the drain plug underneath it. We're just gonna twist that off. And then we're gonna have some oil coming out. It might be hot, so be careful. Just let that drain. Put that right there. All right, so once you take the drain plug out, the drain plug is normally accompanied by a washer, and this is a, a crush washer. You wanna make sure that, for one, you actually have it, because when you put this plug back in, you're gonna have to have one in order for this to not leak. But this basically works as a metal gasket. So when you tighten this down, this will actually crush and create a seal. If this looks like it's badly worn, it's common practice to change these out, but if they look like they're in good condition, like this one actually seems to be in very good condition. Um, I'm gonna reuse this, but if it comes to where it looks pretty bad and scored, get a new one. You can pick one up at AutoZone, O'Reilly, stuff like that, and they're pretty cheap. All right, this is the oil filter right here. It'll look like a canister. This isn't, it, this isn't the same thing that you'll see on all bikes. Every bike takes a different oil filter. Some of them are actually internal. This one is a canister type. So when you start to take this off, oil will start to drip from here. So make sure you have your drain pan underneath to catch it. And then just put it inside the oil pan. Just like that. And just let that drain. So this is the Ninja 636. We had to take the left side panel off, the fairing. And as you can see right there is a K&N oil filter. Sometimes the oil filter will be located in different areas for different bikes. But normally they're in the general, generally the same area, which is in the front and low normally. Some of them are a little bit higher, but this is the general location that they're at. All right, so now we're gonna get the new oil filter and ensure that the new oil filter is the same type as the one that you removed or the one that is a factory spec. And this is gonna have, this one, K&N specifically, has this uh, little guard over it. We'll take that off. And you're gonna wanna take some oil and go around the lip of this filter. And the reason we do this is that it creates a better seal, and then when you tighten this down, it'll, you'll actually be able to tighten it down a bit further than you would if this was creating friction. So just get a little bit of oil, either new or used, it doesn't matter, and just go around the rim. And then we'll, we'll screw this in. Some people like to actually fill this up, but 
Uh, really, that's a personal preference. People say that it helps to prevent uh, dry starts. So, but the way this is mounted, it's sideways, and all the oil is just going to spill out. So, it's really a personal preference at that point. That's it. If you look at the face, the mating surface of the oil filter, you want to ensure that this is clean. So, go ahead and go around. Make sure that the old uh, rubber gasket that was on the old oil filter isn't stuck on here. Sometimes it comes off. It's rare, but it does happen. And also look at the threads of where it is, uh, where it screws onto, and make sure they're not chewed up. So now I got that taken care of. So with the oiled uh, rim, we're gonna stick this on and just screw it in place. A lot of people like to put a lot of force onto this. It's really not needed. So like right here, it's snug. Just go that much, we're good to go. So now we're gonna get the drain plug and we're gonna put that in. We're gonna scoop this over and we're gonna have a towel in place, catch the drips so I have some place for my hand. We're gonna clean up the mating surface, ensure that you have your washer. We're gonna screw this in place. Now, I'm going to use a torque wrench to torque this down to spec. If you don't know how to use a torque wrench like this, I have a video, I'll put the link in the description so you know how to use this. But this torque spec is going to be 18 foot-pounds or 221 inch-pounds. So let me torque that down. Right there. Now we're good to go. Clean up the area and even up by the oil filter so that doesn't smoke while you're riding. And we're clear to add oil. Make sure you dispose of your oil, your used oil properly. This is my used oil uh, tank right here. Use a funnel. And if you go to an AutoZone or an O'Reilly Auto Parts or anything like that, they'll take your used oil and then they'll recycle it. So, be environmentally safe. All right. So, some bikes have a sight glass, which is actually like a window down here, and you can see what the oil level is at. This one actually has a dipstick, and some bikes are different to where the bike actually has to be on the kickstand when you check the level. So this is a Ninja 636, and I'm showing you, instead of a dipstick, it actually has a sight glass, so you can see the oil level. Right now it's on the kickstand, so you can't see the oil, so I'll actually pull this over so you can actually see the oil rise. As you can see right there, the oil's starting to rise. When you check the oil level on most super sports, you're actually gonna hold the bike vertical and make sure that it's on a level surface. And when I set it back down, see the oil level starts to go back down. And if you can see the little marks on the side of the sight glass, right over here and over here, this is marking your minimum and maximum. And you want the oil level to be right in the middle when the bike is level with the floor. Most sport bikes, it's gonna be straight up and down, so it's nice to have a rear stand to hold it straight up or a friend to hold it up if you don't have a rear stand. So you wanna take the drain plug out, wipe it clean, and then go ahead and reinsert it. And now, we're gonna start adding oil. The oil of choice here is Castrol Power RS Racing 4T 1040, full synthetic. The capacity of this bike is roughly 3.4 quarts, somewhere around there. So we should be able to add uh, about two and a half to three before seeing anything on the stick. So go ahead and start adding oil. And then you can cut right there. Most motorcycles that have dipsticks like this, you, in order for you to check the level, you actually don't screw it all the way in majority of the time. So you're actually gonna stick this in until it stops and then pull it right back out. And if you can see, we're right, right about the middle. So now we're gonna run the bike and that's gonna fill the oil filter with oil and then we're gonna check our level again. Be sure that before you run the bike, you put the drain plug back in if your bike has one. And you're also going to put the oil fill cap back on. You don't have to put it on tight, just hold it still. There's a clutch right here so if it runs and this is open, you can start sp spitting uh, oil out. So let's run the bike. When you 
run the bike, only let the bike run for about 10 seconds, the oil pump is actually gonna pull the oil that we just put in, fill the oil filter, and send it through the passageways and lubricate everything that needs to be lubricated. After you shut it off, wait a second for all of the oil in different places to settle down at the bottom. Then you're gonna take your drink or your uh, dipstick out, wipe it off, stick it back in and check the level again. And if you put the oil filter in dry, it should have dropped. So now that the bike is ran, we're gonna take the dipstick back out. We're gonna wipe it clean, because as you can see, there's oil all the way up this. So we're gonna wipe it nice and dry. We're gonna stick it in to check the level. Don't spin it. Check it again, and as if you can see, the level is actually right there at the bottom mark. So we're gonna add some more oil to this. We just added a little bit more oil. So we'll check the level again. And as you can see, it's just like right in the center and that's exactly where we want it. So we'll go ahead and wipe it, stick back in. Now you are done with your oil change. Make sure that you put your filler cap back on, throw your fairings back on, and you're good to ride until your next oil change. So the reason why we do oil changes. Engines have a lot of metal parts inside that move and they rub up against other metal parts or bushings that contain other materials. The materials that shave off inside the engine can go inside of those little rubbing areas and cause more friction because now you have granulates or materials, flakes, whatever it's called, that are between the rotating part and the stationary part that's rubbing up against it and it can cause excessive wear. That's why we do oil changes. As the oil circulates through the engine, it's gonna pick up all of these little particulates and then it goes through the oil filter where the filter catches all the particulates or most of them and then it gets recirculated back into the engine. Aside from that, oil also has a, uh, I wanna say a lubricating property, obviously I can't, I don't know the, the exact word for it, but over time it breaks down to where it doesn't really lubricate as well as it normally would. That's another reason why we have to do oil changes is when new, new fresh oil has that property of staying, uh, I don't, what's the word, lubricating <laughs> is probably the word. So over time, the oil filter will actually get clogged and that's why we change the oil filter as well. It's only good for so many miles. Now, there's a lot of controversy over how, what, like what the intervals are for oil changes. If you run conventional oil, you can change your oil at about 3,000 miles. Some people like to push it and go to four or 5,000 miles. Me personally, you know, it's a personal preference and it's a really hot topic. I don't really wanna uh, say something's right or wrong, but I'm just gonna let you know my preferences. If I were running conventional oil, I would change my oil every 3,000 miles. If I were running full synthetic, like I always do, I change my oil every four to 5,000 miles, depending on the conditions. But everyone, that, like I said, that's, that's my opinion, so I don't wanna have any like fights or anything in the comments. But do your own research, make your own opinion on when you wanna, or how often you wanna do your oil change, and that's really up to you. But the good thing is, is that you're getting your oil change done, and that will extend the life of the engine and you'll be riding for a long time. But that's really it. That's, uh, that's the end of the whole video. If you guys want to see more videos, subscribe. Let me know I'm doing a good job. If I'm not, yeah, just let me know. Go ahead and uh, hit the like button, comment. If you have any questions, let me know. I'll see you guys.